Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, I want to do a uh, repeat of my Earth to Mars mission that I just did. And since I just did that flight in the last series that you saw, I'm not going to take the time to show you the, all the transect steps this time. Um, what I've done is I've already set up this flight so that we're ready to go pretty much right now. In fact, let me take the time down to 0 0.1 so I can have a couple seconds to talk about the setup here. Um, but yeah, the last flight, uh, since I had to use those fuel cheats and whatnot, I was really you know dissatisfied with how that turned out. But it was a really good learning experience overall. You know, it got me re-familiarized with some things. I noticed a few things during that flight that I had forgotten. So I, at the very least, this will be a better, this should be a better execution, I hope. Um, even if we don't make it, uh, you know, even if we still have fuel problems, overall, I think this will still be better execution. With all that said, let's go ahead and switch camera views here and take a look at things. So uh, first of all, I can't remember the date last time. I think it was October 2024 or something like that. This time, the date I'm using is October 29th, 2026. And our time of flight is 285 days this time, which is more reasonable. I don't remember exactly what it was in the last one. I think it was like 320 days, 340 days. So we've cut our time down by over a month. So that's good. And as far as our timing goes, um, it looks like I'm going to arrive at Mars with a more or less a perfect uh, Haman transfer. I'll be arriving in plane. So what that means for for setting up transects is that the only thing I had to use was prograde and date. So my uh, outward is zero, my change plane is zero. So I just have outward and that's it. And then um, coming back onto this side, you know, we have our, our target altitude set at 200 kilometers and we have a heading of basically 90 degrees. In fact, probably if I wait a couple more minutes, we'll have a perfect 90 degree heading, but I won't worry too much about that. So we're basically ready to go. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that in the in the uh, the last series I did, I completely forgot to load up the cargo bay area with um, um, uh, that took a second there because I'm at point one. But I completely forgot to load up the cargo bay area with extra fuel. I was I was planning to do it. I remember thinking about it, but then when I set up the, the locks and, and then I got distracted and just totally forgot to do it. Uh, so this time we have. Uh, half locks module. No, we have a full locks module in cargo two, I think. Yeah, and we have a fuel module in cargo uh, base lot three. So, I have also bled off uh, some locks because by carrying a bunch of additional locks that you don't need, that also cuts into your your fuel. And since the last flight, you know we didn't have enough fuel overall, and even with the fuel cheats. You know, I just barely squeaked in there at the last moment. And as I was hovering over the pad, you know, I think I was about two meters above the pad and I completely ran out of fuel. And I can well imagine if I had cut down my locks in that flight to something closer to what I actually needed, then that wouldn't have been the case. I mean, I still wouldn't have had enough fuel, but at least I wouldn't have ran out of fuel right above the landing pad. So I put 304 days. Uh, I drained off till we have 304 days which I think should be fine based on, you know, what Transex is telling us that we need 285. So that's like an extra 20 days, which I, and because of mid-course corrections, I don't ever want to take it all the way down to, you know, like 286 days or something like that. Because as we do our mid-course corrections, it's going to change our time of flight and it may, and we may end up taking, you know, 290 days or something like that to actually get there. So with all that said, yeah, we're ready to go. So let me, uh, um, some other things I forgot to do last time, <laughs> uh, being very clumsy, I, let me go ahead and go back to real time. I forgot to turn off external cooling, so let me do that now. I forgot to turn on the APU before we took off, so let me do that now. I forgot to turn on um, AF control, so I will do that. And yeah, I believe that's it. We're ready to go. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I can think of. I'm just going to take a quick look at my um, my sheet that I have in the upper monitor where it give, gives me all the keyboard shortcuts for retro doors. 
scrim and all that just to see if there's anything else I can think of. Um, I can't think of anything else. So let's bring up the HUD and let's switch to surface. And let's uh, back up transects on the side and let me have this view up because these are much easier to read. So we have our heading here and we let's bring up uh, something some other things we can take care of really quick let's put this to projection ship let's change our distance readout to pea apa and um so that'll be ready when we need it but i think for now maybe we'll have surface up on this side and all right i think we're ready to go so uh, i can see that my relative my heading is improving a little bit as i sit here so I could possibly, I don't think I'll bother though, but let me just go ahead and swing that note, that line over so that it's right on our position, maybe even just a tad bit ahead. And uh, I think we're just going to go because uh, a degree, I don't think makes a, an appreciable difference. Five, four, three, two, one, let me get rid of the parking brakes. Okay, I thought I could just press, they'll, they'll go away as soon as I... Uh, as soon as I hit the gas, but I thought I could just press period and comma to get rid of those. But anyway, five, four, three, two, one, blast off, heading 90. Here we go. All right, so we're on our way to Mars. So there's our 100 knots coming up on V1. There's our V1. We'll get rotate in a second. Rotate. There's our rotate, so pitch back. Seems like it takes a bit to pitch. I don't understand that. I never remember that happening in the past. Alright, gears up. So, I, yeah, I don't remember it ever taking so long to get the nose up in the past, but maybe my controls aren't perfectly... Maybe my joystick isn't perfectly... Um, uh, calibrated so maybe I'm maybe I have a dead zone there I need to sort out all right let's get on target to our heading of just about 90 degrees we'll use the relative inclination to make sure that we get that right and we'll also pitch up steeply here at the beginning of the flight uh, once again we will be doing a scram ascent because uh, we really need to utilize the fuel that we have as best as we can if we're going to have any chance of doing that uh, that sort of really slow style of landing at Mars. I say slow in the sense that you know it's time consuming. All right, so we're coming up on 10 kilometers and again I don't remember the exact perfect ascent profile for the XR2 but Around 10 kilometers, I'll start leveling off so we can get our uh, horizontal speed built up. And then we can switch over to scram. I think I might, yeah, let me maybe try to aim just a little bit higher than last time because I felt like maybe I ran out of scram. I think I felt like maybe I was using the scram too low in the atmosphere last time. You know, so I was basically getting a, a bit more drag than I needed to have, I think. So we'll aim for maybe, uh, I don't know, 15 or 16 kilometers this time before we... Mach 2. So there's Mach 2, and that buzzing sound means that my um, fuel module just expired. So now I can press Control-G for scram. Actually, I can just switch over to this view because I'm going to have to have it open anyway. Scram doors full power on scram, cut the main to save our main fuel, and back to the other view because with, uh, I think I mentioned this in my other video, but with the 1440 monitor that I have, I find that panel really hard to read these days. So hopefully someday the XR2 can get updated with uh, resolutions that are with keeping in mind resolutions that are a bit more common maybe for today um, although I'm, I'm sure 1080 is still the most common but so let's see here so there's our white line it says our inclinations going up so we want to roll the out the other way a little bit 
and let's F8 so we can pay attention to our temperatures. If I recall correctly, we do want to keep our vessel pretty hot because I, I recall from Orbiter 2010 hearing or reading that the most efficient use of scram fuel is while you're virtually redlining the, uh, the XR2, but I don't really want to redline it in this flight. So, but I do want to, you know, try to keep it like in the yellow zone just to keep it nice and hot. Um, I don't think I've ever actually independently verified that myself, that that's actually true. But I've just kind of taken the word of people who come before me. But uh, if you look at your acceleration, essentially, um, apparently you get maximum acceleration out of the scram engines when you're, you know, like I said, when you're redlining the engine. All right, so let's bank a bit to the left. No, I think that's the wrong way. Bank a bit to the right. There we go. Now the relative inclination is coming down. And pitch the nose down. Keep that heat nice and... Keep the, keep the vessel nice and warm. Can feel the control starting to get a bit loose, starting to get a bit loose on me. So just bringing down the nose here, and then I'm going to shift my focus for a moment over to. Oh, okay. All right, I'll say that's good enough, and then I think I need to bank now to the left. No to bank to the right. Okay, there we go. Now I can see the relative inclination coming down. All right, focusing on the temperature for a moment. I can see the vessel heating back up. We'll take a very brief look outside just for fun. Right now we're in the exhaust plume. So yeah, you can see we are very hot. Let's go back inside before we burn up or otherwise lose focus. So pitching the nose up, I can see the line of nodes just swapped. So I'll start banking back to the left. And, ooh, pitch up a pretty good amount now. Getting really close to red there. And there really isn't much warning. You know, it's, you go green, yellow, red, and then dead really quick. All right, we're at 40 kilometers. We're about half orbital velocity getting close to it. All right, we're back in the green on the temperature. So maybe pitch the nose over a little bit to decrease some of that vertical speed. And then we'll shift our focus back to the aligned plane. Uh, relative inclination here in just a moment, although it is coming down at the moment. All right, we're just about back to level flight. Just altitude increasing just a little bit there. All right, let me... Switch my focus over here just for a second and swing the line around. So relative inclination is coming down. All right, maybe bring the nose up a bit. You can see our heat starting to creep up. Relative inclination is coming down. Now it's going up a little bit. Let me bring up orbit on this side because we will need to start paying attention to that in the not too distant future. Scram engines are just about done. Okay. And check where our temperatures are at. We're getting into the yellow. Scram's about gone, so we'll go ahead and start pitching up now. Control G and full power on the main. Don't want to lose our momentum here. All right. So yeah, I want to get up now closer to 60 plus kilometers, but I don't want to climb aggressively. But uh, yeah, there's no point in being down here in the lower, you know, relatively speaking, the lower part of the atmosphere because we're just going to be getting drag that we don't uh, want at this moment. All right, relative inclination is starting to go up a little bit. So let's maybe bank to the left now. Yeah, it looks like that's correct this time. And I can definitely feel the controls loosening up on me, so I'm going to go 
to rotation and pitch only. Okay, how are things coming along? So we're at 5.4, we still have 2,000 more to go. We have temperature well under control, relative inclination slowly coming down. I'm not too worried about it because it's low enough that uh, you know it'll be a pretty easy correction, I think. So mostly just focusing now on my on my orbit insertion here. Orbit circularization. Maybe we can bank a bit more to the left because I can see maybe that's the right, no, I think that is the right direction. All right, so we're at 6.2, so we have about 1,300 to go on our speed. And APA is showing 62 right now. Time to the apoapsis is about 20 seconds there about. So things are looking pretty good, I think. Relative inclination slowly coming down. Maybe I can bring my line around just a tad, just to get more accurate. There we are. All right, so we are still climbing ever so slightly. And, all right, about 700 more to go on vertical, on horizontal speed. Relative inclination slowly coming down. So I think we're pretty good just right as we're flying right now. I'm gonna start backing off the main engines here shortly. Seven point one, we're getting there. Relative inclination slowly coming down. Can't really focus on that too much at this point. All right, let's start backing off the main so we don't blow past our target altitude. Mark Seventy, a little bit more to go. Seventy-four. Start throttling back a bit more. Now the orbit's really coming together quickly. About one ninety, we kill it. About right there. Overshot just ever so slightly, but I'll take it. Okay, so I think now we can turn off um, Let's uh, turn off those controls We'll go strictly with uh, rotational controls for now and Okay, so our APA is coming down just ever so slightly. Let's pitch up the vessel just a little bit Relative inclination still coming down once we get up to about 90 kilometers, I would say, we can uh, we can open the radiator. So let's see if we can get our line adjusted. So relative inclination still coming down, looking really good there. Um, I guess I'll just leave the AP running for now because uh, we're going to be opening the radiator pretty soon. And the other thing we'll do, actually let's go ahead and turn it off for now because I don't have to worry about the coolant overheating anytime real soon. So we'll just leave it off for now. When we get up a bit higher, We need to open the radiator, I want to open the cargo doors, and I want to dump that fuel module because now it's just dead mass. And that'll help give us a bit more, um, it'll increase our delta V a little bit. In fact, well, <clears throat> if I think about it, I'll have burn time calculator open so we can actually compare the before and after. Okay, relative inclination is uh, zero zero to two decimal points of precision so I like that so I kinda just wanna fly that razor's edge for now I'm not gonna worry about those last four decimal points it's like trying to I don't know it's very difficult so um, if, you know if, if I just wanna make sure that it's trending downwards currently it's trending up so let me see if I can adjust 
and I just want to hold that position right about there because it's currently trending down ever so slightly but those last four digits I'm not worried about just as long as we can hold right here so we're at 84 kilometers we're climbing we're going to end up at 211 it looks like so uh, I guess we could have killed our engines a little bit sooner but that's okay you know 200 210 198 eh. It's all the same, basically, for what we're doing here, I think. All right, so we're getting to a point very soon, if we're not already, where you know our dynamic pressure is going to be so low that uh, we don't have to worry about trying to bank the vessel one way or the other. We can actually take a look at that. You can see it's coming down very rapidly. Uh, we could certainly open the radiator now, but I'm going to wait um, just because I don't have to worry about the coolant temperature overheating anytime soon so I'm just gonna wait to open the radiator until I'm also ready to dump the uh, the dead mass that we're currently carrying so let's make an adjustment here let's go the other way uh, I saw it flip I saw it flip again I saw it flip so we're right here at the moment now we have zero zero three decimal points of precision so that's quite good is there any point in trying to bank the vessel I don't think we can I don't think we have much gas up here to worry about helping our relative inclination maybe I'm going the wrong way though okay so it looks like we still have just the smallest amount but three decimal points of precision with zero that's amazing looks like we're coming into sunrise here all right we're at 100 kilometers let's get rid of the joystick let's pull the keyboard out so we're some more in a more comfortable position switch over to orbit we're not going to worry about any of this anymore and we're going to bring back up the orbit mfd and Let's uh, actually let's just go ahead and uh, pause here because I think we're in a pretty good spot. So let me pause the simulation, switch to the overlay, and I'm going to say that's going to wrap it up for this part of the video. I think a I think the ride to orbit is a pretty good video unto itself. So when we come back, we'll continue from this point. Uh, if you like the video, please do hit that like button, and I will see you in the next part.